Okay, so we're back. This is the third video in a series dedicated towards defending against explosives in Conan Exiles. In this video, we're taking a look at walls once again, and then summarizing the wall portion of the series by looking at the resource requirements needed to make the designs created in videos 1, 2, and 3. In this video, we are combining wedge and square foundations to make a very dense defensive structure. To build this wall, you begin by placing a square foundation. Then place two wedge foundations next to it. Using the trick we learned in the second video, place a fence foundation so it extends into and overlaps the edge of the square foundation. This is key. Next, place two more wedges on the other side of the square. Perform the same placement of fence foundations. Now, you can destroy these outer wedges and fences. You will only have to build them once. The purpose of these overlap fence foundation pieces is that it creates an inner and outer layer on the square foundation. This will allow you to place two layers on each side of the perimeter plus two layers across the center of the foundation. You can now destroy the foundation if you want and place fence foundations on top of all the bottom fence foundations. According to our test in the second video, a fence placed in front of a wall will block damage to the wall behind it. So we will place two walls behind the front and back fences. I tried to place a pillar in between these open squares, but it was very difficult to get all four to fit, so we're not gonna worry about them. So here we have it, a dense chunk of defensive wall. Let's blow it up. We see the benefit of placing overlapping and off-center fences because this relationship keeps damage from spreading to neighboring pieces. Let's run through this quickly. The first fence takes nine explosives and blocks all damage. Next, the three perpendicular fences are destroyed with nine explosives. I tested this setup multiple times, but for some reason the wall doesn't take any damage, so that's good news. It takes 7 more explosives to destroy the wall, 2 more perpendicular fences, and 1 middle parallel fence are destroyed with 9 explosives. The final middle parallel fence is destroyed with 9 more explosives, and the final fence and wall are destroyed with 9 plus 7 explosives. The total explosives required to destroy the setup is 59 explosives. Let's wrap up the discussion about walls by taking a look at the resources required to construct these designs. I selected four options from this video and the previous two. There are tons of variables when it comes to determining how much effort goes into crafting building pieces and explosives, so to simplify things, I decided to focus primarily on steel fire. Both explosives and reinforced stone share this resource, so the effort required to gather and craft it can be accurately compared. I've established three metrics. Total explosive count. If all you care about is maximum defense, then this is the number you care about. Steel fire builder requirement to number of explosives ratio. This basically just shows how much steel fire is required to defend against one explosive. For example, a ratio of two means that two steel fire is required to defend against one explosive. And then the ratio of how much steel fire a raider needs versus the steel fire needed by a defender. The higher the better. Based on criteria one, the max defensible setup is option four. It requires 59 explosives or 5,900 steel fire to destroy it. For the steel fire to explosive ratio, option one is the winner, as it requires the least amount of steel fire to defend against a single explosive and, as such, is the most efficient design. Finally, option one also has the highest raider steel fire to defender steel fire ratio, meaning the raider must spend more steel fire than the defender must spend than any other design. So to wrap up this part of the series, it's been fun looking at wall designs, but I'm looking forward to showing door and ceiling designs in the following videos. I hope this series has been useful so far, and if it has, it'd be great if this inspired you to create your own even better designs. If you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know. And as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, peace.